In this lesson, let's look at how to evaluate exponential expressions. So this is our first look at exponents. And here's a really simple exponential expression. I have 4 to the second power. So 4 in this case is our base. It's a regular size number. And 2 is a little superscript number written in the corner. And this is called the exponent. So a base and an exponent well, the exponent just tells you how many times the base is used in multiplying. In this case, 4 squared means I have 4 times 4, which equals 16. So the 2 tells me to put the 4 down twice. And in this example, 2 to the 3rd is going to give us 2 times 2 times 2. See, the exponent of 3 means the number appears 3 times. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. So it's really common for people to look at this and think that it's going to be 6, but you think about it, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. Now, I need to give you a little heads up about some uh, kind of vocabulary that we use. This we pronounce this four to the second power or two to the second or two to the third power, but for two and three we have a little shortened name. Instead of saying to the second power, we say squared. So this could be read as four squared. And instead of saying two to the third power, sometimes we'll say two cubed. So you know, like a, a square is in two dimensions and a cube is in three dimensions. And that's sort of where those shortcuts come from. So again, this can be read as 4 to the second power and 2 to the third power. Or it could be read as 4 squared and 2 cubed. Either way is acceptable. So now we're going to practice evaluating some different values. Here I've got 5 squared, so that's going to become 5 times 5, which is 25. So if they ask you to write it in multiplication form, this is it, and then if they say simplify, you're going to go all the way to 25 in your homework. For a negative base, if it's in parentheses, we're going to put down the negative 5 three times. So this is going to become negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Now we know from earlier experience that three negatives multiplied together make a negative answer. And 5 times 5 times 5 is going to make 125. And here's part C. This is negative 2 to the 4th power. So negative 2 is our base, and we'll put down negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Now four negative signs make a positive answer. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. So this is positive 16. So I want you to pay really close attention to the parentheses now. Here I have negative 2 to the 4th power. And the negative 2 is in parentheses, which tells me that negative 2 is the base. And since 4 is the exponent, I will put that base down 4 times and get positive 16. But without the parentheses, this is a very different problem, entirely different, because now the exponent is only affecting the 2. In other words, now in this problem, 2 is the base, and the negative is in front of the base. So when I write this out in multiplication form, the negative is sitting here, but the negative will only get put down one time. 2 is the base, so 2 will get put down 4 times. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is still 16, but since there's only one negative sign here, it's negative 16 for our result. 
So this makes a difference on even exponents, but not so much on odd exponents. Look at this example. Negative 2 to the third power in parentheses means I'm going to put the negative 2 down three times. Three negative signs give us a negative answer. Without parentheses, the negative goes down one time, and then we get 2 times 2 times 2 because 2 is the base. Okay, so the answer is still negative 8. Now, what happened here is, on an odd exponent, an odd number of negative signs gives me a negative answer, but one negative sign would also give me a negative answer. So the thing is here, I still have an odd number of negative signs, whether I put the negative down every time or only once. But on the even exponents, you can see it makes a difference, and this throws a lot of people off. So you got to be careful you got to pay real close attention to these parentheses. So we're going to evaluate a few more together, just for practice. Okay, on this first one, negative 6 is the base. Therefore, negative 6 gets put down two times. And two negative signs will give us a positive answer. So 6 times 6 is 36. On part B, 6 is the base, so the negative gets put down one time, but the 6 gets put down twice, so 6 times 6 is 36, and there's a negative in front, so it's negative 36. On part C, 1 is the base, and the negative just sits there. So 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and there's a negative in front, so it's negative 1. On part D, negative 1 is the base. Because when it's in parentheses, the, uh, the exponent works on everything in the parentheses. So it's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So four negative signs make a positive answer. Okay? On negative 3 to the third power, this is in parentheses, so negative 3 is the base. So you can see I put it down three times. Three negative signs make a negative answer. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. But on part F, there is no parentheses. The negative goes down one time, and the base is 3. So the 3 goes down this many times, three times. And we still, 3 times 3 times 3 is still 27, but there's a negative in front, so it's still negative 27. On part G, there is no parentheses, so 5 is the base, and the negative is just sitting in front. So negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. On part H, we do have parentheses, so negative 5 is the base. So we put down negative 5 times negative 5, and that equals 25. So you can see the difference that the parentheses makes on the ones where we have even exponents. And you need to really practice on this until you can't possibly see how anybody could ever forget it. This, this is something that's really going to stay with you through all of algebra, and it's going to be, you know, it, when you're in college algebra and, and beyond, you're going to keep running into this situation where you have to wonder about the parentheses or no. And so it's really important for you to get this clear in your mind now and keep refreshing your memory and keep practicing it until you just thoroughly understand it.